I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. you know, all right, you know. And then, uh, then I saw him walking down into the gym. He came in for his, his daily workout. Yeah. And what was that like? I, he gave me a big hug. He said, "Welcome home. Good to good to see you. Let's let's connect after after I work out." And I was like, "All right." Haven't seen him since. You didn't connect. <laughs> no. 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 I think some stuff came up, Ariel. Oh, I, I, I thought maybe <laughs> literally like. An hour later, I didn't know if he was like, come up to the office and let's have a uh, tete-a-tete. No, no, I had to go. Okay. I had to like work out. And go Is that the only conversation that you've had with him yeah. since returning? Wow. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about what's transpired since? Uh, I mean, how do you feel? There's no positivity there. You know, there's very much. A... I, re- I didn't read all the allegations. I read text messages mm. and I went, oh, fuck this. Like what, it's indefensible, you know? And I think, you know, doing this, I, I, I I'd imagined I was gonna be asked about it, you know? And I think the easiest thing for people to do is to kind of ignore it or avoid it. Um, but man, it's, it's there. And my initial first thing out of my mouth was, I'm kind of shocked at how dumb he was like writing stuff down and leaving that paper trail and it's horrific. And I'm not like, I think at this point, all the energy should be used to somehow, I don't even know if you can make reparations or amends, but there's victims here, you know? So like what CM Punk thinks about Vince and the CM Punk Vince relationship doesn't, fucking mean anything all that stuff takes a back seat i'm more concerned about like going forward how do those people survive after suffering all that trauma my biggest concern you know do you think that the business is better off if he's not in it at this point how do you how do you say anything but no but but yeah but yeah the, yeah. the business <laughs> right have a field there with that one how do you say anything but yes the business is is better without, without obviously that. you weren't around for the last 10 years but did yeah. you did you know you know let's let's be honest vince mcmahon wasn't an angel everyone knew that he wasn't an angel um but this is like next level this is evil right like this is next level stuff yeah. if what is being alleged is true right? right did you have any idea that this type of behavior was going on behind the scenes no uh and again th- the biggest thing i can draw comparison to is when Chris Benoit did a murder suicide, Mm. right? I was friends with Chris Benoit and I don't know if it's just how I process things, but I'm famously like on camera weeping, Mm. you know, saying goodbye to Chris because at the time we didn't know, right? We didn't know he had, you know, murdered his wife and his, and his son. And the week prior, we're in Dothan, Alabama, and I'm traveling with him, and we're on the road, and he grabs me and runs me into the trainer's room, and he points, and his little son is in the corner, and he's taped up his hands, and he's drawn X's on his hands, wow. you know? So, like, coming to terms with, that's my friend, he did this horrible thing. Obviously, fuck him, fuck that. But then, you know, like you don't have, I don't have memories of Chris Benoit traveling with me and, and you know, murdering people at the gym. Right. So I, there was never any instances where I'd, you know, be in a room with Vince and he's shitting on somebody or sexually assaulting somebody. You know, you just, it wasn't like Caligula in Rome. We just didn't see it, you know, but there's that part of me that goes just like Benoit. Okay. I, I, yeah, okay, I, I can I can see that. And that's the thing. It's like, I'm sure Jeffrey Dahmer's mother wasn't like, oh, I can, I can see my boy doing that. No, like people are shocked that their friend or mentor or whatever is responsible for doing these, these horrible things. But I'm just more of a, I, I, I guess I'm pragmatic where I just kind of looked and I went, yeah, okay. All right. I, okay. I can see that mm-hmm. kind of nutty, you know, Chris is kind of intense. He's quiet. And then you just, you know, you build that in your head 
you know, but the, I mean, it, 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 it's very, very hard to reconcile. I, I heard what Becky said where she, you know, like, cause Vince is a father figure to a lot of people. Vince, I think, liked to develop those father, the father relationship. <laughs> and I think that's why he was always fascinated with me because I was just like, fuck you. I got a dad. I don't, you know, you're my boss. Mm -hmm. like, let's just keep it that way. Uh, but it's, 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 it's been a, it's been a while. Like it's just been wild. All that shit. It's, it's sad. Yeah, no, it's sad. And, uh, again, like I said, it, it, it's evil. He ruined his life. Life. And it, he, he ruined his life, ruining other people's lives, mm -hmm. you know? So there's very much a part of me that's just like, all right, we got him. Good. I'm shuffle him into the basement. I, I struggle with asking you some of these questions and you can say whatever you want, if only because I have so much respect yeah. for the business. Yeah. So I will ask you the question. You can tell me to fuck off. Okay. Um, what was the plan for you for WrestleMania? That's what everyone, that's like the $64 million question <sighs> at this point, because they want to try to put the, we want to try to put the pieces together. Like, was this the original plan? Did it go here? Did it go then there because of the injury? So could you tell us as of Royal Rumble, what was the plan for you for April 6th and 7th? It changed a lot. You know, because I I came back in and I told Triple H, I was like, look, 